in this video, we're going to talk about header files in C. And I'm sure you've seen at this point, every C example we've done has included standard IO.h at the beginning. So we're going to talk about what specifically this is doing. Now to do this, I'm going to write my own header file at first so that you can see what happens when we compile a C program that includes a header file. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to write up a file called headers h so in this file to start off with i'll put a comment i'll do a pound define and i'll also include a function and this will just return n divided by two So since that's a local header file, I'm going to enclose it in quotes and I'll ignore standard IO.h for now. So here's headers.h. And if I compile this, I'm going to use the dash E flag because what that does is says, hey, just run the preprocessor, which is what handles the include. Don't actually compile the code. So you'll notice when I compiled that C file, you'll, you'll see that here's the definition for that half function that was in the header file. Now I want to state right now, you typically aren't going to want to have functions definitions in the header files, but I did that just to show you everything in that header file wound up here. Now you don't see the comment or the pound define because those get discarded by the preprocessor. But any bit of code you have here, so if I defined some integers as well, you would see that show up when you compile with dash E. And dash E doesn't do anything special other than it just spits out the result of what the preprocessor does. So you, you can see here's the contents of headers.h, and then here's my C file. So you can almost think of an include statement in C as being a copy and paste. Get everything from this file and put it into my program. Let me back down to, to this point. Let's suppose I want to declare an integer. So now when I compile, you'll see that a is equal to 42, which is the number that was defined in the header file. Now in practice, your header files are going to be predominantly made up of symbolic constants and forward declarations. You don't want to necessarily have code in your header file. You typically don't want to have anything other than a declaration. So for example, if I want to create a global variable and counter, and we'll initialize it to one. If I have a counter vari a variable called counter in my C file, So if I compile this, notice I get a redefinition error. And if I do the dash E flag, you'll see why. Notice my code now has int counter equals one, int counters equals two. Now I can declare that there's a variable somewhere called counter. And now notice it works, but that you have to have that actual, you would have somewhere else needs to actually initialize that to create the variable. This is just a declaration that there's a count that there's an integer somewhere whereas when i do an actual assignment that actually creates the variable at that point it's best to in your header files to limit those to declarations only or symbolic constants and the reason for that is is it avoids situations like we just ran into where we had a multiply defined name that would also go uh, for code as well i typically you're going to want to avoid having code and you would just put a forward declaration in here so this, and then you would have another C file where that was declared. We can run into trouble if a header file gets included in our C file multiple times. And I'll show you how that can happen. I'm just going to put some text here. Like this. And so the reason I'm doing that, obviously that's not going to compile. But when I give the dash E flag, you can see there's that code. But let's suppose I had another file, I'll call it headers more.h, 
and I'm going to include headers dot h here and I'll say this is more headers will this be a problem and then in my original c file I'm going to include headers and more headers or I think I did headers more yeah so let's fix that So where we're going to run into a problem here, let's do E, is you'll see, first off, there's no such file or directory because I put this in, in the brackets. And the brackets say, look look where the system puts the header file. So that's why standard IO is there. The quotes say, look in the local directory. So now I have, here's a header file. This is more headers, but look up here. This is a header file too. So this is where it's including headers.h. This is where it's including headers more.h, which is also including headers.h. Going back into what we had before, if we do this, we'll have multiple declarations of whatever's in headers.h. So what we're gonna wanna do to fix this is put what's called a guard. So we're gonna say if not def, and we're gonna call this headers underscore h. So if that symbol is not defined, we're going to define it. And then we're going to put our end diff here. And what this says is, if you haven't seen the symbol, define it, and then include all this stuff. That's the end. But then the next time this gets included, this will be defined, and it won't include this particular code. So let's run this now. Or let's compile this or at least run the preprocessor, and you'll notice we have headers.h right here, but more headers doesn't include header.h anymore. We've lost that. That's gone away because when it got here, it was defined. And so it did not include the information from headers.h the second time. So that's why we put these guards there. So I'm going to make this actually compile. And let's... Uh, make sure so yeah it's not use it's not usable now if i wanted to do if i wanted to print this out like this if i compile this i'm going to get a warning but not an error that there's an implicit declaration of function printf so it says to include this because that's where that forward declaration for printf is remember we need a declaration or a definition before we use a function in c so to fix that I include standard io.h. Now, when I compile that, it will work as I expect. And if I do this with the dash e flag to get the preprocessor, you'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff that I get that are forward declarations when you pull in printf. So you can see here's a, a function via scanf, scan, look, you, we just saw scanf, set vbuff, all these uh, functions that I can call. If I want to, these are all have their four declarations in standard io.h. So that's a real quick introduction to why we have headers and, and why we put the guards in there in C. And C++ is the same thing, the same idea. Uh, one difference there is that with C++, the built-in headers, don't we don't add .h at the end. And then our personal headers, usually you'll see them named .hpp to indicate that they're C++ headers, but otherwise everything works pretty much the same.